Welcome to the uh, January 8th, 2002, regularly monthly meeting of the Cape Elizabeth School Board. Um, if things go well tonight, I'll tell you my name at the end of the meeting. If things don't go so well, my name is George Entwistle. Uh, we'll begin, as always, with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Invisible, with liberty and justice for all. We're sorry that uh, George can't be with us tonight. He's uh, not feeling well. Uh, adjustments to this evening's agenda. I believe we do have one. I, we have one under new business uh, consideration of a motion for the Portland Arts and Technical High School Part 2 budget. That will be uh, inserted as item 12B under new business. Other adjustments? Seeing none. Uh, you have in your packets uh, the December school board minutes. Hopefully you've had a chance to review them. Mm -hmm. Any comments, <clears throat> errors, omissions? If not, then uh, we will enter them as, as recorded. Comments from the high school and middle school students. Begin with uh, Chris and Dave. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Um, just there's a lot of stuff going on at the high school uh, nowadays. Uh, we just finished winter break, so uh, obviously everybody's pretty refreshed, and uh, I think that's uh, definitely good. Um, it's been a long haul since uh, Thanksgiving. Um, various things that are going on. Uh, actually, during the holiday season, a number of CAPE students participated in uh, volunteering activities for uh, local uh, disadvantaged uh, individuals. Um, uh, one comes to mind, and I, I don't know if I'm getting the name of this right, uh, the Teens You Share Project or something like that. Um, it's basically, uh, you give m most of the gifts that are donated during uh, the holiday season are given to uh, younger children, uh, infants and whatnot, but this is actually designed to uh, uh, give uh, gifts to teens, and so it was a very unique and interesting project, and I understand it was very successful. So um, that's just one example of the many things that are going on. Um, also, uh, Mock Trial competed in the state competition uh, just this Saturday, uh, the 5th, and um, out of, I think, 1,200, 1200 points total, we lost by three. <laughs> so uh, I guess we came in, we, yeah, we, it was a close Close in the history of the uh, competition. Yeah, that's what we're told. And so uh, 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 I think we've all gotten over it, but um, <laughs> a little bit of choke up, like, but uh, anyway, um, it's, uh, it was very close. It was a very good trial. And um, I think everybody in mock trial, um, most people work harder than we did. <laughs> and Chris uh, and I enjoyed the uh, five hours in the courtroom to hear that we lost to the team we lost to last year in States, yeah. which was Hampton. But um, it was a good trial. Though. It was a good trial, and they did they did very well. Um, so um, hats go off to them. <laughs> All right. Uh, one thing that I have to bring up um, right now: the senior class of Cape is in. It's pretty close to losing their senior privilege. Um, right now, we only have 145 points remaining out of the starting off uh, <coughs> number of 444. Um, I have some uh, numbers right here. Um, from before November 5th, we had we had lost 165 points. Um, one day alone, I believe we lost 95 points in one day. <coughs> it was from like two two infractions or three infractions from like the same person or something. So it was like a it was a horrible kick. Um, from the 5th of November to the 14th of December in that month, we uh, there were three parking violations which accumulated 30 points, and from the 17th of December. To the 21st of December, a four-day period, we lost um, 100 points. So right now, that that puts us at losing 295 points, and with 145 points remaining. So uh, right now, the senior class is kind of tr is <coughs> uh, get stuff organized so this uh, so we don't lose this before summer comes. Yeah. Some measures. Um, uh, the school board. I'm uh, sorry. The uh, SAC right now is reorganizing their. Uh, or they're going to start the review board, <clears throat> which is made up of students and faculty who will look over each of the infractions and decide if it was a fair, uh, <clears throat> fair infraction to take points away from. Um, the SAC 
has also seen some um, problems in the uh, in the way we uh, take points away from the entire from the giant pool. Um, some students are accumulating the, uh, a lot of points and a lot of students aren't accumulating any. So we're going to start looking at some of these things and you're probably going to be hearing about senior privilege um, later this year. Oh, and um, next week is we have midterms. So uh, we come to school on Tuesday. We'll have two midterms on Tuesday and then two on thir uh, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. Um, and then that's the end of the first semester. So we're all looking forward to it. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions or? Questions, comments? Here we go. Kevin? Well, first of all, uh, thank you for the refreshing information on the senior privilege thing. I'm surprised to be hearing that, but I, I should have expected that from you guys. Um, I, as, as you know, I was uh, uh, a mover and work closely with the SAC on getting that policy adopted. And uh, I am certainly available to come in and uh, help you with that. Um, certainly, there needs to be a recovery plan put in place. And, you know, there's always positive peer pressure to be exerted. Um, that's number one. Number two is that uh, a group of seniors who will remain unnamed just for uh, general principles um, uh, went over to our new Patriotic Rock and put up an honor roll listing all of our active duty service persons on that rock. They did an extraordinarily nice job of it in very, very cold, cold weather. I know that uh, uh, there were a, lot of the, a lot of the kids were home uh, for Exodus leave over Christmas and were really psyched. Uh, to see that kind of support coming out, not only now from the middle school, but also from the high school, and they're uh, they're all feeling pretty pretty good about it. So uh, those who were involved, you did good. I can't imagine who that might have been, though. That's well, it. I know that it was uh, very cold in the day after Christmas. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> Other comments or questions from the high school representatives? Thank you very much, fellas. Thank you. Now the middle school reps, please. Um, hi, I'm Brianna, and even though it's just the beginning of the new year, we have a lot of things that are already in progress in the middle school. Um, one thing that's coming up is the, a student leadership conference on January 10th, and what that is is the school is sending some representatives uh, from the 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th grades to go and listen to lectures and participate in uh, different leadership activities. Um, the goal of this program is for the representatives to eventually be able to come up with ways to bring some of the ideas they heard at the conference and um, uh, use them like on a daily basis and spread it to other kids in their grade. Um, another thing that's coming up is the career fair on January 24th. 23 locals from Cape Elizabeth will be coming to the 7th and 8th grades and like discussing their occupations with the students. Uh, also, uh, another thing that's coming up is the play. The middle school is putting on Peter Pan this year and 150 students signed up to audition and the auditions are, have been taking place this week and will continue on through next week. Uh, the rehearsals begin on the 22nd and the production will be on April 5th, 6th, and 7th. I'm Lily, and um, we have our student council is very active lately. Um, we adopted a family over the holidays and uh, went shopping for them and got lots of presents and wrapped them and food, and they greatly appreciated that. Also, we recently held a roller skating social for the fifth and sixth graders, and they thoroughly enjoyed it as well. Um, on February 5th, the annual variety show will be held, and there will be two shows this year due to the amount of popularity it attracts, and there's going to be about 14 to 12 acts. Sports are doing very well, and the 7th and 8th grade girls basketball is now underway. Um, progress reports are coming out on January 23rd, and we'll have our next 7th and 8th grade dance on February 8th. Also, um, a lot of the advisory groups are
doing a lot to help out now, especially um, Mr. Strout's advisory group is holding a school-wide book drive, and the books will go to less fortunate inner city libraries and schools to enhance their collection. Thank you. Yeah. Any questions? Or? Questions or comments? Well, I, I just have to tell you how great I think it is. I, I love hearing about the service projects, both in the high school and the middle school. I think it's uh, definitely a, a sign that we're, we're all making this a better place to live. And yeah. Great job here. David, I think you have a couple of recruits for a uh, mock trial team here. Another year or two. <laughs> okay. Is that it? Thank you very much. <laughs> Communications? The only communication that you have in your packet is the notification of municipal elections, which will be held in May, and um, papers that are due for that. Comments from the public? Before we go to comments on the public, okay. um, just want to recognize one of our high school science teachers, Beth Lewis, who's here. I somehow suspect that Jeff may have some entertainment scheduled. I'm not quite sure, but welcome, Beth. It's nice to see you again. No comments from the public? We will move on to recognition. No recognition this evening, except that I recognize that George wasn't here early on. Uh, superintendent's report. Uh, I would just like to take a couple of minutes to share with you um, uh, as we approach the, the half year, um, some information regarding our future direction plan um, and some of the things that have been happening, at least briefly. One of our strategic goals, as you are aware, is to attract, retain, develop, supervise the best possible staff for the capabilities of the schools. And some of the things and the actions that were planned for this year that have been completed, and one was to create a district-wide professional development team. Uh, Sarah Simmons, our district-wide coordinator of professional development, has done that. Uh, the team has met this past summer and has met during the course of the first part of this year um, and is beginning to plan uh, what a model for professional development like, might look like in Cape Elizabeth. Another completed action was to review the action team surveys that have been, been done in the past, and that team has done that, uh, to look at some of the information that came from the action team in hopes of using that for the professional development plan. Um, our strategic goal to communicate and build support among all stakeholders, one of our actions was to publish and distribute a community slash school newspaper. And the first issue of the school district newspaper, The View, was distributed uh, to all staff in every household in Cape Elizabeth during December. Our second issue was planned for the spring of 2002. Um, our strategic goal three was to develop a set of indicators that will assist us in measuring the success of our action plans and the degree to which our vision is realized. For this particular um, action, a group will be created um, in the second uh, part of this year in the hopes of creating a database management system. Um, and we are in the process of looking at some possible exemplary schools that uh, we might compare ourselves to. That is a, a second part of the year activity. Our strategic goal four is, is the curriculum goal, and again, Sarah Simmons has been working with the group, and the entire teaching staff participated in a full-day workshop on November 19th, and will be continuing this week in documenting curriculum, which has also been, as Sarah shared at one of our workshops, is something that has all been put on the computer, and I think will be a big help in, in documenting that curriculum. And strategic goal number five is to foster and sustain a climate of enthusiasm, collaboration, and high expectations based on mutual respect and agreed upon standards of behavior for all. Um, one of the actions that um, was to create opportunities for staff cooperation, collaboration. As you know, we have eight 90-minute late start and early release days that have been used for this purpose, uh, the nine full professional development days, and I think uh, uh, principals at each of the schools have been doing a great job in allowing staff those opportunities to work together either in departments or teams to work on some of the issues at each of the schools. Another action was to establish building level shared values and those uh, have been sent, I think were included in, in your packet if you didn't receive them prior to this, um, and those are the shared values that relate to our future direction plan. Also with the climate committee, um, 
last night there was a public forum uh, which was a first step in establishing a district-wide code of uh, conduct for our schools and that's something that we'll, the Climate Committee is leading the charge on. We're also, um, the Climate Committee will be meeting next week. One of our goals was to establish a baseline regarding the climate in our schools. A survey has been created and will be completed by staff hopefully by the end of this month. Similar surveys for students and parents are planned for the 2002-2003 school year. Another activity that that group is working on is creating a program to welcome new students. A subcommittee has been established and has created a list of recommendations regarding the welcoming of new students into our school system. And uh, lastly, with that same climate group, um, one of their goals was to create a philosophy of behavior K through 12. And the work I think that we did uh, last night in looking at core values um, that, that we believe in here as a school district as it relates to the, kinds, the kind of culture that we want in our schools um, is an important first step in that and is something that we also plan on getting input from students um, and uh, more input from the community and from staff as we look at not just a discipline uh, or a code of conduct but a philosophy of behavior. It's kind of a brief update as to where we are with our future direction plan. I'd also like to report to you a notice, notification of a resignation. A uh, longtime employee who uh, this year did take a, a leave of absence has submitted, and you have in your packet, a letter of resignation um, from Sarah Berman, who has been at Pond Cove for the last several years. That's it. Thank you, Tom. Uh, principal's reports. Uh, Tom Eismeyer is not He's, here tonight. No, his wife is uh, Jeff, a report from the high school, please. Fortunately for you, you do get me and not Beth Lewis. I'll try to remember to bring Beth in a later occasion. She's here just as an interested observer, I believe. Um. <laughs> She'll think twice before she does that. <laughs> Beth and I um, can entertain everyone with a discussion of geology if you'd like. <laughs> as is uh, seems to be frequently the case, Chris and David and I sort of um, compliment one another in, some, in these reports, and I wanted to start with, I, I wanted to talk about a couple things, but I wanted to start with um, my observations of a mock trial um, that I went to in mid-December. Tom Priscilla was also there uh, at that mock trial. And it was a mock trial against Wayne Fleet. Um, and I've never seen a mock trial before. Um, and what I saw was amazingly impressive. And if anybody ever gets an opportunity to see it, I really urge you to do it. Um, as a former lawyer who used to stand in front of courtrooms, including in that courtroom where the Mark Clutt trial was taking place and occasionally feeling very inarticulate uh, in front of judges in black robes, I was really, really, really impressed with what the students were doing. Um, the poise that they showed, the ability to think on their feet, the ability to make objections that were appropriate and that they could defend um, using appropriate references to the legal rules of evidence, which are often very, very arcane, was really, really impressive. Um, conduct conducting cross-examinations on the fly, sort of responding to what they had heard in the direct examinations was just really amazing. And I really could um, give a whole lot of highlights from the mock trial that I saw. Um, the mock trial team includes, by the way, both Chris and David. Um, because really the performance that I saw was worthy of a mock trial highlights film of, of our own, I think. And I understand that the states, they sort of, at the finals, they increased that level of performance even farther. But I just, for purposes of illustration, I wanted to point out one, one person, even though I could point out many. Um, one of our senior girls, Stephanie Reed, um, did, a, uh, cross, did a direct examination of the accused. And this was a rape case, which is a, it was a sort of an unusual case to pick for mock trial purposes, but that's what the, organization picked. And so Stephanie's job was to put on the stand the accused um, as his attorney, as his defense attorney. Um, and what Stephanie did was impressive in terms of the questions that she asked, in terms of the information the, that she elicited, in terms of the logical case that she was building. Um, and that was really, 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 really good. And it, it would have been a great performance just on that. Um, more importantly, what I saw from her case is she was so poised and quiet and 
compassionate towards her witness um, and calm and just incredibly friendly. Um, that what she did subconsciously, and I don't know if she was doing it deliberately, had she thought about it or not, but what she was doing by adopting that demeanor is that when her witness was responding to her, she, the witness was responding in the mirror image of her, of her presentation. So he who was accused of rape um, was coming across as a compassionate, calm, poised, thoughtful person. Um, and that was incredibly amazing because it just, it, this indirect sort of evidence that she was giving of just this guy's poise, you couldn't believe that this, this man would do what he was accused of doing. And I did want to say I've only seen one equally powerful cross-examination in my history as a lawyer, and I am not the one who did it. Um, I attended a uh, uh, trial ad advocacy class at, uh, in Boston, at Boston University Law School, a bunch of years ago, and James D. St. Clair, which may be a name that rings a bell for some of you, uh, did a, uh, a, a, a mock cross-examination of a witness, examination of a witness that he was doing. St. Clair is well known, among other things, when he was a young lawyer, he was, he was one of the guys um, uh, from Hale and Dorr, a big Boston law firm, that sort of began the end of Joseph McCarthy in the Army McCarthy hearings because they began to attack his, his approach to the whole um, issue of communists in the government and that kind of thing. So St. Clair was there. He became a little more notorious for his, he was one of the last uh, attorneys to defend Richard Nixon when he was president and facing impeachment. So this guy's a big, big, big name. Um, and I remember being blown away by his examination. And I don't remember what the specifics were, but it was another thing like Stephanie Reed where the information that was gotten out was incredibly good and valuable. But what was even more important is by the time the person was done, by the time his examination was done, you could know this person never could have possibly done what he was accused of doing, just because of the demeanor that he evoked from the witness. And I don't mean to say that Stephanie is going to go on to a career making, I'm sure, hundreds of thousands of dollars at Hale and Door in Boston. Um, and there are certainly some things that everybody can do to improve. But I was, that was the quality that I saw. It was really, really impressive. Um, so I'm sorry to report that, we, as, as, as David and Chris did, that we did lose to Hampton Academy. Um, and that's too bad, but I'm glad to report that according to Mr. Mullen and, and the students as well, um, the trial was so close that the judges had to deliberate and deliberate and deliberate for the longest time they've ever had to deliberate, and, and, and that the verdict by the judges was really the mock trial equivalent of a hair's width. I mean, that's how far the, the two teams were separated. So they did a great, great, great job. Um, I also wanted to briefly comment on one teacher in, in the school, um, uh, Angela Schapani, who teaches Spanish. Um, um, Angela is experimenting this year with a technique of teaching Spanish called total physical response storytelling, which is a natural approach to the teaching and learning of language in which students are enmeshed in repetition, storytelling, and physical play acting in the process of trying to internalize a foreign language's vocabulary. So it becomes part of the, the vocabulary that's owned by the student. Grammar is taught, but it's not the main thing. Instead, the focus is developing comfort and fluency in a foreign language with temporary tolerance for mechanical mistakes. Um, and anybody who has had young children and watched them learn a new language is familiar with that approach and that technique for people learning languages. I observed one of Angela's classes before the holiday, and I was amazed. This was a level one class, introductory class to students who had never taken Spanish before. I was amazed by the speaking comfort and ability that the students in the class demonstrated and the enthusiasm that they demonstrated. There were mistakes, grammatical mistakes, but what was really neat is though that hadn't been the focus of the class, the kids were thinking about what they were saying and they were self-correcting the mistakes that they were doing as they, as they were doing it, which is a very rare thing in a foreign language class for kids to actually be able to process that simultaneously, so it was really neat. Um, it's, an, it's an approach that has intrigued other teachers in the foreign language department enough that Mark Pendarvis has begun to experiment with that approach in one of his level two classes. And he has initially reported great successes. And I'm anxious to hear the continued successes, I hope. And uh, it's really exciting to see. It's really good. Any questions? Questions or comments for Jeff? Thank you very much. You're welcome. Nancy Hutton from the middle school, please. 
And Beth, I would just like to say, I'm glad to see you here tonight. But I was really glad you didn't come to do a performance because the last time I followed Jeff, I had to follow a performance and I wasn't prepared. And I really wasn't prepared tonight either. So I certainly invite you back to come back. And I know it will be great, whatever you present. But whew, thank goodness it wasn't tonight. Um, kind of thing. I, did, I just have a couple of things to share um, with you that um, Brianna and Lily didn't have. One is the three days last week when we came back, the fifth grade team planned an integrated learning unit based around recycling, and they had um, planned on this together and worked on it and done the plans. They also worked with the town's recycling committee, and our, their kickoff activity uh, was the town's recycling committee, came to our school on Wednesday, and um, held forth with our fifth graders um, and entertained them and instructed them um, on things about recycling, and it was really terrific because these four people who came are not teachers, but they're really committed to recycling and their passion and concern for their community and their environment was evident, um, picked up by the students immediately. And I think one of the students' favorite thing was when one of the gentlemen was wearing a coat made out of plastic milk bottles, literally made out of plastic milk bottles, and then they discussed how that probably that wouldn't be the new fashion statement, but if you took the material and refined it a little bit more, you could make clothing um, out of the recyclable material. So um, the students had a great time, and unfortunately, or maybe um, kind of thing, I was over here doing a budget um, presentation when they did their culminating activity was they all got together and they sang the song they have for recycling. So, um, the next time Mr. Shedd brings a performance group, I will be bringing the entire fifth grade class to sing you the recycling song, which they can do with tremendous energy and answer all sorts of questions about recycling for you. So um, you have that to look forward to, but Jeff, I just need to know what that performance date is um, so I can be prepared. Last time, too, in our December meeting, I neglected to just say a few things. I know at that meeting, um, um, made you aware of the fact that Bruce Lind, one of our longtime colleagues at the middle school, would be retiring at the end of the school year. And um, I should have at that point also um, expressed our sadness at seeing Bruce go, but also our eagerness for him and his next adventure. Um, Bruce is finishing his 34th year in Cape Elizabeth. Um, a short time ago, both Bruce and I came back on a school bus from going roller skating with the fifth grade students. And one of the things that we talked about while we were there is that um, about the next project the fifth grade team is going to do this year, about an integrated unit of study um, based around the westward movement and having a visiting author come. So as Bruce Lynn goes on to his next adventure, um, it is not with any decrease in his enthusiasm and commitment to the students in our school. And so um, he's working right up until the end. And I know he's enjoyed his time here, and we've certainly enjoyed our time working with Bruce. So we'll get to say lots of things about him later and at other events, but I certainly did want to acknowledge um, that from my point of view um, from the last time. And the next thing that I would like to share with you is really just a short story um, about our seventh grade team. I know many times um, throughout budgets you're always asked, so what do team leaders do and what's this team idea and those kinds of things. And teams come together to plan units like our fifth grade unit did, fifth grade team did with the recycling unit. They come together to talk about students that they're concerned about and how they can help them um, do that the best that they can and improve their work. And also sometimes they come together because something new is coming at all of them and they need to be ready so that they can present it with great enthusiasm and information. Certainly for the seventh grade team, that new event is the laptop computers, which people have heard a lot about in the news. And one of the things that both Gary Lenoy and I are learning about this is the project is going to be great, but sometimes we find out about the next step in the project moments before we're supposed to have something in. So on December 19th, we received information that you could apply to be a demonstration school, meaning that you would get some of these laptop computers early and that then you would have to develop lessons and at least two classroom teachers would have to be willing to host visitors from throughout the state from March onward so people could see how having the use of a laptop computer would change instruction and learning. Well, Gary and I thought this would be great. This might be interesting. But we needed, it's not about what Gary and Nancy want to do, it's about what the seventh grade team wants to do. So Matt Whaley, the team leader, gathered them together real quickly. Um, they got together and Gary and I were talking, well, how will we pick the two and what will we do? And I, I came up with this really weak idea that 
well, I know what we do. If, what if we do it in a subject area, and then all of the seventh grade students will experience it, and we'll have at least two teachers that will be involved in it. So we said, well, yeah, that, that might work. But we took it to the team. So they were enthusiastic. Gary did his part. He did a great part. And they said, yeah, we, we might want to do that. And then I came on with my part. And they looked at me and said, well, Nancy, that would be OK. But we've got a better idea. And indeed, they did. Their better idea was that they would all be the classroom teachers because they all want to learn how to do this together and make it available to all students so that if we get chosen as a demonstration school, that if somebody comes to our school on March 13th, um, let's say hypothetically, they might see Joanne Paquette using the laptop computers in science, and they might watch Brian Fichero using the laptop computers in math. If another group of teachers comes on March 14th, they might watch Deb Casey using the laptop computers in social studies, and Holly Swenson using the laptop computers in language arts. So that they can all be informed, they can all learn together, they can make a meaningful learning experience for the students. Um, we did, Gary got together, he got the information from them, and due to a lot of hard work from Gary Lenoy, he got the plan together because, of course, we heard about it on December 19th. We left for a holiday break on December 21st, and the um, application was due, due January 2nd. So um, due to Gary's hard work, he got it in. I don't know if we'll be a demonstration school or not. That's sort of a, another point, but the point that the seventh grade team as the laptop computers come our way, they're ready to work together as a team, to plan as a team, to think as a team, and to make sure that using those laptop computers is something that's meaningful for all the seventh grade students that come their way. So I think we're ready, um, we're excited, and whether they come in February or they come next September, it will be exciting times at the middle school. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you for your words about Bruce Lynn, too. It, it triggered a brief moment of reflection. I think uh, any time we have longtime school family members like Bruce and, and Sarah Berman, who we heard about earlier, uh, it's, it's kind of a sad moment. They, they certainly had ample opportunity to leave their imprint on our school, and, and both these individuals have used that opportunity to full advantage, and we've all benefited from it. Thank you. Uh, committee reports, Finance Committee, Kevin? Finance Committee met briefly this evening, um, signed warrants, had a general discussion about the uh, date for upcoming budget hearings. Uh, it appears that the only one in question for all purposes is January 17th, um, and we'll wait for the town council uh, to take a look at that next week and come back together and uh, firm up those dates. Um, but that, that's uh, pretty much uh, how things went. We discussed uh, briefly uh, timelines for uh, presenting to the town council uh, information on our building projects, but I'll defer any further information on that to Marie. Um, that's essentially it. One final item was that Regrettably, the Portland Arts and Technical High School Part 2 budget, which included a new biotechnology program, was killed by one of our neighboring school districts. Um, that committee, uh, on which I serve over at uh, PASS, uh, has met again. Uh, we are committed to moving PASS forward, and the faculty over there, who I'd like to congratulate, cut the heart out of their individual requests in order to maintain the biotechnology program. We will be meeting again Thursday, hopefully with all, not hopefully, but with all of the school districts to present the new budget, and uh, we are hopeful that that will then go back to the home school committees for approval uh, shortly. And we will uh, be entertaining a motion on that uh, under new business. And that's it for finance. <clears throat> Thank you, Kevin. Policy subcommittee, Jen? Um, we did not have a meeting uh, last week, and our next meeting will be February 6th at noon um, in the Jordan Conference Room. Thanks, Jen. Uh, the, anything else? No? Building committee, Marie? Um, I, we have not had a meeting since our last school board meeting, so I have nothing new to report. Um, and our next building committee meeting will be January 24th at 7 o'clock. 
here in the Jordan Conference Room. Thanks, Marie. Unfinished business? Seeing none. Uh, new business. We have the consideration of a superintendent's recommendation for athletic fee position. I'd like to make the following uh, recommendations for athletic fee positions at the middle school Joe Joan, indoor track, Jeremy LaRose, indoor track, Chris Brunette, swimming, Sarah Jordan, eighth grade girls basketball, Matt Whaley, seventh grade girls basketball, Wayne Bridgham, B expansion girls basketball, and David Kinsella, assistant indoor track. Unless there's an objection, we'll consider this as a slate, and I would accept the motion. Anyone? Kevin? I move that we adopt the slate as enumerated. Moved and seconded by Marie. Discussion on the motion? All in favor? Votes unanimous, 6-0. Uh, item 12B, which was added under adjustments to the agenda for tonight, is consideration of a revised past budget. I'll turn it over to Kevin. I would like to move uh, that we authorize and commit to uh, the past Part 2 budget in an amount not to exceed that previously approved at our prior meeting. Unfortunately, I didn't do enough homework, so Mary, I'll have to ask you to plug that figure in. I think it was about eight thousand dollars, but um, if you if you would. But the motion is for an amount not to exceed that which we have already approved. Um, hopefully, that'll help us set the tone on Thursday. We have a motion on the floor. Have a second, Jen. Moved and seconded. Discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor? 6-0. Uh, before we adjourn, we'll review some of the upcoming dates, meeting dates. Um, as we mentioned earlier, we have a tentative town council school board uh, workshop scheduled in the near future. Uh, a date has been suggested as, as at January 17th. It hasn't been confirmed yet, so we'll have to update you on that. Uh, we have a school board workshop meeting scheduled for January 22nd in the high school library. This will be a preliminary budget discussion on personnel and programming allocation for the coming year. Uh, January 24th, as Marie mentioned, we have a building committee meeting. Uh, our next regular monthly meeting is uh, on Tuesday, February 12th uh, at 7.30. That will be preceded uh, by a finance committee meeting in the Jordan Conference Room at 6.30. And our next policy subcommittee meeting, uh, as Jen mentioned, will be on Wednesday, February 6, 2002, at noon in the conference room of the town hall. If there's no other business, I'd accept a uh, motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn. Moved. Seconded by Marie. All in favor? 6-0. Thank you very much. Thank you.